Good morning, dear saints. Great to see you again. Thanks for joining us today as we gather. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Remember that Sunday morning, and after a long wait, we gather together for worship. We have uh, 8 o'clock and 10.30, and then we'll have Bible study in between. That will still be live streamed. We will live stream the 8 o'clock service. For all of you who are watching so faithfully, thank you for that. And we will continue to uh, social distance. I'll give you a, a little look in the sanctuary here. We've moved the uh, we've moved the seats apart so that there are all kinds of places for you to sit six feet away from your neighbor and still find comfort here in God's house. So keep that in mind. We won't be having any meetings or anything like that in the evenings yet. Everything is still, uh, we're still uh, waiting for the whole thing to pass so we can get back to everything that we've been doing. But please join us on Sunday as we gather. Tomorrow, this afternoon, 4 until 6, offering Holy Communion again. If you'd like to come in and join us, we would be happy to, to serve you these gifts of God as well. With that, we gather for today. Our daily prayer is noon to 96. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm for today, psalm number 17, 7 through 15, the psalmist writes this, Wondrously show your steadfast love, O Savior of those who seek refuge from your adversaries at your right hand. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. From the wicked who do not from the wicked who do me violence, my deadly enemies who surround me. They close their hearts to pity, with their mouths they speak roguely. They have now surrounded our steps, they set their eyes to cast us to the ground. He is like a lion eager to tear, a young lion lurking in ambush. Arise, O Lord, comfort him, subdue him. Excuse me, confront him, subdue him, deliver my soul from the wicked by your word, from men by your hand, O Lord, from men of the world whose portion is in their life. You fill their womb with treasure, they are satisfied with children, they leave their abundance to their infants. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. When I awake, I shall be satisfied with your likeness. It is so easy for us humans to want to take control, to make things happen, to uh, put things in the in the right order of the uh, the uh, the right order according to what I think. Did you notice how the psalmist refuses that? How the psalmist does not go the way of uh, retribution or trying to put his enemies under control or do those things. The psalmist depends on God to do that. The psalmist depends on God to take care of him. Even though his enemies are there to tear him like a young lion waiting in ambush, he trusts that God will be the God who will take care of this. What a great message for us too as we look at the psalmist to continue to trust in God in all things, to resist the will, our will, to fight and to push and to make things happen, but to be, depend upon God and His Word and trust in that first and foremost and order our lives around God and His Word. Well, our uh, Old Testament lesson for today is actually the Old Testament lesson for this coming Sunday, the fifth Sunday of Easter. Cantate, a, a, a wonderful service filled with singing. 
as we gather back as God's saints in one place again, we fill the service with different parts and different music so that we might continue to sing these Easter joys and messages to our Savior. Well, the Old Testament reading is Isaiah chapter 12, a very short chapter, a transitional chapter from the beginning, a chapter of joy as God's people sing joy to their Savior and salvation, and then 13 for uh, quite a number of chapters goes forward, 13 through 23 goes forward, and it is prophecy against these nations. Chapter 12 of Isaiah, you will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away that you might comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and I will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitants of Zion, for great in, the midst, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You can hear their joy. You can hear them rejoicing in God and His salvation that He has given to them. And right away at the beginning of the psalm, we, we have these two things in contrast with each other. For though you were angry with me, you turned your anger away that you might comfort me. When we look at, at our Lord and His grace and mercy and how He comforts us, it is an amazing thing because as God's people in the Old Testament and the New, we continue to follow our own path, to make our own gods, to, to follow our own selfishness. And in the psalmist, excuse me, Isaiah reminds us of this. I will give thanks to you, Lord, for though you were angry with me, you turned away that you might comfort me. You see, God's anger does not continue to rage against his people, his sinful people, he, he puts his law in front of us to lead and guide us so that we might repent, but he also comes to comfort. How easy it would be for us if we were dealing with a person or a group of people who continued to fight, who continued to do their own thing, who would not play along, how easy it would be for us to just cast them off. Fire them, don't do business with them, not talk to them, unfriend them on whatever social media and then tear them down besides. But that's not the way our Lord deals with us. He should be angry with us because of our sin. He should destroy us because we continually want to do our thing and not worship Him. We continually trust in ourselves, in our finances, in all the things of this world that we think we can control, and not in Him. He doesn't come to us only with his anger. He comes to us to comfort us. His anger has to be satisfied. He hates sin, so instead of destroying us, he takes his own dear son, as he promised. And he puts his son in the place of sorrow and death, that we might be saved. He puts his son into the world and gives him flesh and blood and has him be the Lamb of God that comes to take away the sin of the world, goes to the cross, dies there for us, rises there for us, defeats our enemy, and gives us righteousness and holiness and peace that we might also be comforted. What a joy it is to have such a gracious and a loving God. A God who does not just push aside the law, a God that demands that the law be kept, but knowing that we can't, he has his son keep it for us, forgiving us and comforting us. This is our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, amen. 
In our prayers today, they focus around the church and the life of the church, that this anger and this comfort that we talked about in Isaiah will continue, God will continue to show his comfort to his church and to bring the lost so that they might hear, that they might also rejoice in his comfort. We pray. O Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, have mercy upon us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Merciful God, we humbly implore you to cast the bright beams of your light upon your church, that we, being instructed by the doctrine of the blessed apostles, may walk in the light of your truth and finally attain to the light of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, you have called your church to witness that in Christ you have reconciled us to yourself. Grant that by your Holy Spirit we might proclaim the good news of your salvation, so that all who hear it may receive the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. Almighty and everlasting God, you desire not the death of sinners, but that all would repent and live. Hear our prayer for those outside the church. Take away their iniquity and turn them from their false gods to you, the living and true God. Gather them into your holy church to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father, we thank you for this day and the gifts that you have given to us. We ask, Father, again that you would watch over all of those who struggle and suffer. Be with those who are recovering from surgery. Give them strength and healing according to your will. Be with those who are struggling with illness and recently diagnosed cancer. We pray, Father, that you would uphold them and have them to always turn to you and depend upon you for their healing, their hope, and their comfort. We ask, dear Father, that you would be with Clara Ulmer and her family as she mourns the loss of her husband. But, Father, her mourning is only for a moment because we know that Ed now resides and lives with you in the promises that you have kept to him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand. Excuse me. Blessed Lord Jesus Christ, at this hour you hung upon the cross, stretching out your loving arms to embrace the world in your death. Grant that all people of the earth may look to you and see their salvation. For your mercy's sake we pray. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, thanks for joining us again today. Remember, Sunday morning we gather together. Holy Communion this afternoon. Go in His peace. Amen.